Hi everyone, in this video I'd like to answer a question that's asked a lot. This is in regards to what happens if a patient cannot use their inhaler. So they are prescribed, for example, a very good inhaler for their asthma, their COPD, and they cannot use it. What can we do in this situation? So the first thing I would like to ask as a doctor is, are you definitely trying to use it correctly? Because many patients struggle with that. It's not your fault. Inhalers are complicated devices, especially if you haven't been used to using some sort of a strange device, such as this one, or this one, or any other device really. It's hard to get it right from the first attempt. And sometimes what happens is that doctors in a rush, they may prescribe an inhaler, but they don't show you how to use it. And then you're left to your own device, no pun intended, to use these devices correctly without anyone showing you how to do it. So first question is always, are you definitely using it correctly? Do you think you're using it correctly? Try to go back to the instructions that are given to you with the inhaler when you pick it up from the pharmacy. And also look at videos online. Try to, to see if you're actually doing it correctly. The next thing that I would recommend is that you go and speak to your doctor about this issue. Be very open, be very honest, Take the inhaler device with you to the consultation and show your doctor how you are using it. There's no risk in taking an extra puff in the doctor's office and they might actually help you improve your technique so that you're actually doing it right. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of feedback, and you'll get it right. If that doesn't work, sometimes, depending on the inhalers, especially for inhalers that look like this one, the doctor may sometimes recommend a spacer device, something that looks like this little big thing. And then you connect the inhaler at the end and it helps you with synchronizing your breathing because this is an issue with this type of inhalers that create a puff uh, because sometimes you need to catch that puff as you're breathing in and it can be difficult, especially if you're struggling to press on the device. This eliminates one step because you press on it, it releases the puff inside this device and then you just inhale from it, hold your breath and release. So this makes it a little bit easier. The other thing would be to use a different inhaler. So discuss this with your doctor. If you really, really are struggling with the device that's been prescribed to you, try to see if an equivalent device can be prescribed. Because most of the inhalers today really are pretty much copies of each other. So we don't have that many medications that are actually given. They generally have the same principles of action, the same medications inside, maybe with different names, but the same pharmacological effect. So I'm sure if, for example, someone is on Symbicort, they can be prescribed a Foster inhaler or a serotide inhaler, or there might be just a slight change to the way you take your medication. Maybe you'll have to take it twice a day, depending on your individual situation. But there is always an alternative device that can be found. And as I said at the beginning, very important to ask your doctor, ask the healthcare professional who's prescribing the medication to you to show you how it works. Actually try to take a puff take an in inhalation from the device in front of the healthcare professional in order to receive some feedback whether you're doing it right or wrong. And then the final thing, if all else fails, if you can't find an inhaler device that you can use, you really are struggling, you're not, not really coping with the spacers, with all these things, the medications required to treat pulmonary diseases can be given through a nebulizer. This is really a last resort because with nebulizers, we're not able to give the exact medications that are in the inhaler. So some of the medications that I put into the nebulizer, they don't have a long duration of action. So this limits their use to some extent. And also depending on the way you use the nebulizer, the medication may not be as effective or the doses may be a bit too high with the nebulizer. So there are a lot of issues to consider, but all these recommendations that I've made are just to let you know that there are options. But the main thing is, as always, try to talk to your doctor, try to establish channels of communication and be in touch with them. See them regularly, maybe every three months, see how you're doing. Have, you, have a checkup and then I'm sure that your condition will be controlled much, much better. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It really helps a lot. Take care and see you in the next videos.